and and, and it's a good thing that she's like that. Got the humble heart, simple and but self specific. So, how did you respond to when he? Or at what stage did he say, "Hey, babe, this is what I'm going through financially"? And how did you respond to it? Well, I think I got to see everything full up front um, when mm. we moved in together, and um, and I was cool. I, I I I know what it's like not to have nothing. You know what I mean? And I would never leave him in a situation, no matter how crazy our relationship was, because I know what it's like to be alone. And I would never leave him while he was down, regardless. And even though I was a firecracker and crazy, I used to laugh all the time. I was like, I may not be what you want, but God sent you what you need. You know, mm. I said, we're going to make it regardless of whatever. I remember we were in the bathroom time laughing about it when we finally kind of started to get through it. I was like... We talked about why he didn't tell me everything up front. You know, he said what he said. I didn't feel like it was a burden that you needed to carry. And I was like, well, how did I do? You know, well, how did I yeah. do here? Like, you know, so mm -hmm. it was it was big. Oh, let me ask him, Chi Chi. How did she do, Rod? <laughs> I made vows. I broke them. Hindsight, I didn't comprehend the gravity of the exchange of this solemn promise. A vow before God and man. It's time to unpack these sacred words so that I never take this oath lightly, ever again. I'm Latera Sar Whitfield, and this is the Marriage Vow series on the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Latera Sar Whitfield. Listen, I'm so excited that we have been diving head first into this marriage vow series. And I'm getting so many DMs, so many comments on the uh, YouTube channel about how these episodes are reframing your ideology of what marriage truly means. And so it does my heart really, really good. Hey, but before we get started, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with us, come on, man, let's make a commitment. Hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you also turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about our upcoming episodes and go ahead and like this video and share it. Man, I'm so excited about today's guest. I was perusing through my IG when their uh, pages popped up and I started, you know, looking at their content. And I said, hold on, these are some kingdom minded people. I said, I like this because you can get caught up by the optics and very attractive couple, absolutely uh, stunning couple. But what I like is when you go behind the, the face and you can see the heart and the mind of, of people and you see that their heart are totally sold out for God. And that's why I brought them on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Well, without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast, my new homies, Latisse what up? and Rod Gardner. How y'all doing? How you doing? Hello, hello. Everything is good. Happy to be here. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Y'all some dope individuals. Y'all know that, don't you? We do. <laughs> God didn't make a mistake hey, man, here. We, we try to hold it together, man. We try to keep it going for the street. So listen, this episode, um, as we've been talking about on the Dear Future Wifey podcast, we've been unpacking these marriage vows. Now, we have a rule on the podcast that we keep it lit. That means we live intentionally and transparently. And so I don't have to give y'all dis that disclaimer because y'all actually live by that already. So I just want to make sure that we are in agreement that y'all about to keep it lit today. All right? We are, we sure. are in agreement. It's the only way. All right. Well, listen, today's episode is entitled For Richer or For Poor. Mm. Amen. So I saw this dope live stream that y'all had where y'all were unpacking uh, this vow without even truly unpacking this vow. Y'all were just talking about your own testimony and mm -hmm. it resonated with me. And um, why is it important for y'all to actually be transparent and share y'all's journey of the good and bad times? Um, I think it's important because I think people have a false image of marriage, especially when you're looking on social media. You just see the pretty picture, but you don't realize the work that goes behind the scenes. And you got to put in, you have to put in more work behind the scenes than you do on camera. Um, so to me, I personally can see through the BS and I don't like it. And I don't even <laughs> want to rock with you if that's what you, you know, if that's what you're giving me the fakeness. I like the raw, I can respect the ugly truth. So I'd rather take that. So that's just how we, you know. That's how we move. And we always just being one, being transparent and always being straightforward with all our community on IG, social media, and even in, in our regular life. What what we what you see on social media is exactly what we are and who we are. And we don't 
fault it for nobody. We don't change it for nobody. We don't care about what's going on out here. Our validation world. doesn't come from people. At all. It comes from God. So, so. long as we stay true to ourselves and God's word, we're going to be all right. Man, that's what I'm talking about. I want to share something with y'all that happened with me when um, when I was married. I, I've been divorced for about five years. I got divorced in 2015. So this is a post that I posted on Facebook, January the 14th of 2013. I do are two of the most powerful words spoken before embarking on the love quest known as marriage. It's a verbal confirmation agreeing to accept the for better or worse without possibly knowing how worse it will get. But we still say I do. After being married for seven years today, I'm proud to say I'm happily married. It was definitely a struggle getting to this place of wedded bliss. A few years ago, I subconsciously tried to sabotage my marriage. It's strange. I hit a rough patch and started believing I didn't deserve to be married. Enter into my mind. I had it all planned out. Grind hard, make money, buy a home, propose publicly to the woman who supported me on my come up, marry her, move her in, live happily ever after in that order. LOL. And guess what? I did exactly that. Little did I know the U.S. would face an economic crisis a couple of years ago uh, after my I do, causing me to go broke and lose everything I grinded for. I felt less than a man, ashamed to come home. I desired deep down inside for my wife to upgrade and find someone better. I just yearned for something to deflect attention from my shortcomings. God and I had a love-hate relationship during the season. I was angry with God. You see, when I was single doing national plays across the country, I made in a month what my last job, the Dallas Morning News, paid me in a year. I was doing well, making it rain in church with tithes and offerings, blessing my family and friends financially, all while working to prepare a place for my one day wife. So I was devastated after acquiring all that I had and losing it. I remember feeling like crap after losing our home, a condo I purchased prior to our, our I do's. And to add insult to injury, we had to move into a duplex she purchased prior to us knowing each other. That's her house, I thought to myself as the dagger turned deeper into my ego. Understand, she never made me feel less than a man. These wounds were self-inflicted. A couple of years after living in her duplex, I asked her, don't you miss the condo living downtown and everything? She replied, it was all right, but I don't need all that. Shocked. What, what, what you mean you, you don't need that? I bought that condo for you. No, you did that for you. You wanted that lifestyle. I don't need that to be happy. And there I stood, feeling like a plum fool. I had beaten myself up for so long, and like a corner man, her wounds began wiping the bruises. I submitted to God's process. My wife is a beautiful, awesome, and extraordinary woman of God who truly understands the meaning of I do. I love her patience and willingness to submit to the God in me. I love her for loving me unconditionally. Brothers, we spend so much time working on the exterior possessions when our true focus should be the content of our character. Who do you become under pressure? What self-inflicted wounds are you causing? Where does your value system lie? Ladies, don't be deceived by the Housewives reality series. A lot of them have issues money can't fix. Happy seventh year anniversary to Lisa. That's strong. What happened then? <laughs> it's just, it just, it just one of those things. It wasn't meant to work. It was one of those things to where we just wasn't in alignment on some, some, some core values. Like she was a solid Christian woman, and we're still friends this very day. So okay. it's one of those things where she was a great, she was a great friend, but I didn't believe that we made great partners in marriage. And I know that's crazy because even now on my podcast, I talk about how the foundation of our relationship should always be uh, friendship, but it just, it just didn't work out. And so I'll talk about more of that um, in an upcoming movie that I've been writing. But uh, when I read, when, when I saw y'all's episode or y'all's IG live, it made me go, they get it. They get it. So let's unpack this. So what happened in y'all's um, for we're going to talk about that poor moment because we, we already see the glow up and we'll talk about mm -hmm. that, how y'all transition to that. But uh, let, let, let's talk about how, how did y'all how did y'all meet? Uh, I met my wife in 2009. That's nine. In, uh, in Atlanta. She had just Atlanta. she had just moved to Atlanta, mm -hmm. just moved to Atlanta. And throughout the process, I saw her coming out the club one day. <laughs> And I told her, hey, I'm a great catch. And <laughs> actually, she saw me, and at that time, two or three girls walked up to me when I was standing by my car, so she kept going. So a few days later, I actually saw her in the same spot. 
same club. The same club. It was a hot spot. It was a hot spot, man. You know, we got the hot spot. And actually, it'd be honest, it was a strip club. It was Onyx at strip club. Not as frequent, not mad it was Onyx. And we always used to hang out there. That was just because I was right in Buckhead, stayed down the street. It was just the hot spot in Atlanta. And I yeah. said two days later, and at that point in time, I told her, you're not going to walk past me again without me getting your number. And at that point in time, we went to Waffle House that night, and she ain't left my side ever since. Mm. She ain't left my side ever since. <laughs> so that's how me and the wife met back in 09. Back in 09. And I think you was just fresh 24 now. I had just turned 24 like two yes. weeks prior. Yeah, I just turned 24. So what's the age difference? Uh, yeah, I'm 36 now, and 43. he's 43. Oh, me and you the same age now. Yeah, yeah. we both 43. So, we're, so have you always wanted to be married? Me? Both of y'all. <laughs> oh, I didn't. No, I didn't think I was I was I was I was uh I was black thunder in Atlanta. Uh, I was I was not I wasn't in the mindset of marriage at all. I was living that Atlanta, the dream, you know. I came from the NFL life. So when I never thought I could get married because I seen the good and the bad in women. I seen, you know. When you live in this limelight, you get to see both sides. The ugly of a woman when it come down to being not loyal. So I didn't think I would ever get married. I didn't even, that wasn't even on my radar. Mm -hmm. Keep it one. It wasn't never even on my radar. Yeah, I didn't even believe that good men existed. I didn't, I didn't That's believe in love. I fought him on it too. I was like, <laughs> no. I um I dated the same type of dudes because I felt like I already knew what I was getting, but I didn't have a good relationship with my stepfather, my daughter's father, my brother, my real father. You know, so all the men in my life that could have at least given me a glimpse of an example of being good or loyal or truthful or anything good weren't. So for me, I just didn't. I just dated. And I was, like I said, I was a single mom when I met my husband. So I just kept that life separate. That was cool. That was fun. I didn't have no, but I was. I didn't see that as like in the cards, you know, um, the influence I even had with the women growing up were always like, oh, every man's going to hurt you. Every man's going to cheat. You just got to find the one that's worth it. And I was just like, no, nah, I'm cool. I don't, I'm cool. We can date, be cool, but I don't need, <laughs> I ain't with all of that. I see some of these wives get dogged out. So I was like, mm, I'm good. <laughs> so hold on, Rod, you said that you saw women not be faithful. What you mean by that? Would you, would you, was you uh, like messing around? You saw a lot of married women cheating on their husbands? Oh, married women cheating on their husband, girls with boyfriends acting like they faithful and they got the best relationship, but she just left my house two days ago. <laughs> it was all bad, man. It was all bad. And I was the one, I was never going to be that guy who ever got played or looked crazy in these streets. So I wanted to spend <laughs> money on them. I'm a good time now. They call me the good time. I'm the one you come hang You're out the with. Fun boy. I'm the fun boy. Right, you am, call him. You're the fun boy. But I am not the one who finna get caught in these streets looking crazy. So I have a girlfriend for a little bit, you know, break up with her once the summertime came back around. <laughs> but I was just bad. I mean, I was just all the way around. Man. I used to tell him, I'm like, you're the, I think you're the guy that you date before the one you marry, right? Because <laughs> we're at the club, we're on the boat, we're chilling. You're not the one you take serious. No, Even when right. we got together and I fell for him, I didn't mean to fall for him. You know, I <laughs> thought he was just a typical. But everyone was like, yo, Rod, don't wipe him. Like, don't get caught up in this one. He's not that type of dude. He's the fun boy. And <laughs> here we go. And here, and here we and are. Here we are. <laughs> and well, how did it transition, Rod? So, so she admitted how she got caught up emotionally. She put, she put you in this, in, this, in this frame. She said, listen, you ain't the guy that... You're not marriage material. And she wasn't even thinking about marriage anyway. So she was right. having a fun time. So then how did you get caught up, Rod? The way I got caught up when I met her, <laughs> physical wise, oh, she was my everything. I was like, oh, this is the one. <laughs> this is the one right here. She fresh in Atlanta, so she ain't even been tainted in these streets yet. You said the one at what, though? What was she the one at? <laughs> well, she was the one I wanted to be mine. At the time, I wasn't thinking about marriage, but she was definitely <laughs> going to be mine. Nobody else is going to get hold to her after this day. <laughs> so that's how I felt about that. Nobody else is going to get hold to her. So, so, that so, so you just knew she was going to be your girlfriend. You said, I want her to be my girlfriend, basically. She was going to be my old lady at the time. Yes, yeah, she was going to be that. So after that, we started dating. At the time, I had a girlfriend at the time. A whole nother life. I had a girlfriend at the time. And we went through that spell of back and forth. I'm going to leave her. I got to yeah. go. I'm coming. Just give me a minute. It was that whole situation. And That's then my right. wife, then she cut me off for about 40 days. She I changed did. her phone number. She told her girlfriends, don't, don't tell them nothing, don't answer his calls, nothing. Oh. 
So she disappeared on me for about 40 days, 40 nights. She actually fasted. <laughs> I fasted. I wasn't even in church, but I grew up Catholic and it was around Lent time. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to fast him. And back then they didn't have block on your phone. So I had to like change my whole number. Um, so yeah, I definitely yeah, so did. She, she fasted. I didn't tell him I was leaving. <laughs> I just was done. So it, it, he was sick. <laughs> I was sick. I was sick. So that, that kind of changed my mindset, but I got to do better. I got to do better. So she finally called me uh, after her Lent. And once we met up, I mean, I was staying in the condo in Buckhead with my girl at the time. I left <laughs> everything. Everything. I left That's everything the at the condo, all the good furniture, all the good paints, cause all this kind of money. I mean, I got all kind of good stuff. I'm talking about good stuff. Everything that was left. You just left it. You just left I it all. I got some clothes and I was out of there. I never came back. I was back. out of there and I went in because she had an apartment in Buckhead. I moved over there with her. We stayed there for a few months before we got our place together. Yeah, we were searching for a house. Yeah, we were searching for a house to rent. And at that time, is that's how it started off. But it was crazy. And people don't really know how crazy <laughs> it was in the beginning because it was like, but well, you understand that first year of dating, it, it was, was rough. It was rough. I almost you said, it was time for sure. So listen, you just up and left. What did you and tell your, your, your old chick? What did you tell her? I don't know. I don't know. I don't even remember what I told she her. Was, she but was, I told her she she knew at that time about her. But we she had got know. me and her had talked because I was like, I just want to know the truth. She, she because he's talking everything. marriage and he loved me. And I'm like, I I I've so, listen, just what's happening? Like what yeah. is really going on? So that's when I left him alone when she was like, No, we're together, we're together. And I was like, you know what? You got it. <laughs> you know, easy words. But um you know, it was just, it was a bunch of back and forth. But that time I called him on day 41 and I was, had asked God, I was like, listen, if he's supposed to be in my life, cause I was crazy about the war. I've never been like crazy about somebody, but I had like an obsession. I couldn't leave him alone to save my life. So I asked God, I was like, if he's supposed to be in my life, put him in my life the way you intend him. If he's not, boy, please free me of this, 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 what I got on me because yes. it's like a drug, and um, I was like a drug, baby. It was crazy. I never felt like that, and I wasn't the clingy type, I wasn't the one to try to like, I was cool, like, just you know, I've never been, I've never been like that for nobody, so it was, it was crazy. But, um, it, 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 like, he was the only drug, uh, I mean, like, she used the drug too because he said yeah, he left he, everything. We well, were crazy about I, and, I, and I, we sure. tell it all the time, we were like, hey, man. We was crazy about each other from day yeah. one. Yeah, day one. We didn't yeah. know how to be with each other. Like we, we didn't the, know how. We was toxic to as hell. All every day fighting the whole nine yards. While all in, the in the streets, I don't but, care. I'm showing out in front of your mama. Listen, but we couldn't leave each other alone <laughs> at all. You say I'll be in the streets fighting, fighting Listen, in the gym, I'm in the gym, all getting. That's what got us into the church and council. Who's fighting in the gym? She got mad because <laughs> she, <tried to> change. <laughs> she on a machine. I'm trying to change the back part that you lean back on, and it hit her, and it hit her in the back a little bit, and she got mad at me. I'm like, baby, I didn't try. It anymore. wasn't about the machine. It was bigger than that. <laughs> yeah, so, the, the underlying stuff. So he oh, actually oh, hit you in the back. Yeah, yeah, you start swinging true. on him. She was triggering everything. And at that time, a guy named Mike Well, who was a good friend of mine, who was big into the church, he came up to me like, Raw, I want to invite y'all to this uh, radical love class that we teach at Word of Faith. And if y'all meant to be together, once y'all take this class, you would know, because yeah. it will uncover everything. Yes. Deal with a lot of mess. And if y'all meant to be together, this is short. So he went to both of us, had a conversation with us. We agreed to go. And we've been uphill ever since. Yeah, yeah. Well, answer this real quick. What made you be willing to go to a class like that? Well, at that time, we probably had been almost two, three, three years. years in. Three, yeah. Three years in. Still living worldly, still doing what we do, still, you know, staying on the same path we've been on, but just trying to do it together. Chaos. But at the same time, <laughs> I knew I had a good woman. I knew I had a selfless woman who always put me first, always put her daughter first. I mean, she was just over, she she didn't put, she didn't take no mess. And I think that's what it, what made me so attracted to her because she was that new, that Jersey girl who <laughs> cuss you out, wouldn't allow you to talk oh, to her. Oh, Jersey me. girl, so you should have led with that. Okay, now I understand, oh, had, now I'm getting referenced. I'm right, getting right, referenced right, now. yeah. She had that fight in her fight. and I wasn't used to that. No, so at the end of the day, I couldn't, I couldn't let her go. And I just felt like for us to try to make this work and we know we want to be together, we know we had to make a change. So 
that's when we made the choice to go to this class yeah. and see what it was like. Cause we didn't know what to expect. I think the biggest thing is, like I said, we 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 wanted to be together. We just didn't know how to be together. That's good. We didn't have that. That we were so hot or cold. We were we either had we were either we all over each other, super lovey dovey, can't keep our hands off each other, or we were ready to kill each other. Yeah, we can change in the same. All can be over throughout the day. Thirty <laughs> seconds. Now they're like these two. Oh my god. <laughs> we were wild. What we were, were your friends together. telling you? Were your Listen. friends saying y'all just don't need to be together, or were they encouraging y'all to do the work, get therapy, get some relationship counseling to make it work? Because they could identify the love that y'all have for each other, where they could no, say, no, y'all need no. Hey, my friends were just supportive. I'm packing my bags every weekend. I'm leaving them. Well, come on, girl. I'm driving back now. Come on. Yeah. No, yeah, they kind of let us do our thing. Yeah, they kind of let us do our always... thing. They know we were together, but it was just like, that's that crazy couple. Like, Raw, did you do? They, they just... know. That was like, that's that crazy couple. That, but even though they're going to break up and break up 50 times this week, they're gonna they're gonna gonna going to end up back together. So just mind your business. That's <laughs> mind your business. Mind your business. Stay out of it. You don't want none of this smoke right here. But I always try to tell people, man, marry the love of your life. Because when it gets crazy and when it gets rough and when it gets dull, you're going to remember that why you're still together because that doesn't just come that chemistry, that fire, that passion, that willingness to put it in for that person that you don't, that you don't find that every day. That's good. That's good. So how did, so Rob, we discussed uh, the transition that you were going through financially. You just got out of the league. Mm -hmm. uh, you're two years removed from the league. Uh, let's discuss the financial situation that you were going through through that made me resonate with your journey and made me uh, actually read the letter of what I was going through for my transition as a national playwright, uh, where you're searching for identity and then the finance is just not there because of hitting the economic downturn. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so I actually retired because at that time I felt like I had so much going on business-wise that at the end of the day I was good. You know, I had these big, two big, projects I was building in Peachtree City, south of Atlanta. And I was building one that was a condensed town home, which was like 280 units. I had a single family home community. It was like 176 units. So I, at that time, I felt like I was doing everything right. I partnered with Wachovia, who I was doing all of my private investment with, and they partnered with me on this real estate adventure. So in my mind, you can't get any better. You partner with a bank that you already do investment with. They're not going to allow this deal to fail because they invested in it. But nobody saw 08 come when the bubble bust, 08, 09. And when that happened, I used to meet with the same four guys with Wachovia every week to discuss next plans, investment, where we at, the whole nine yards. And when I got to that meeting, the discussion wasn't about how do we resolve this? How do we oh, consolidate it? How do we restructure the, the, the loan? How do we do it? They didn't want to hear anything. Only thing they wanted to talk about was we finna call these loans. We can't be in this deal no more. What you gonna do? And I'm looking at them like, but if we already, at that time, 16, 17 million, we already done did because we was in phase Ooh. two. 16 God, million. God, no. Did you say 16, 17 million? Million. We done built the whole foundation, the sewer systems. We done cleared all the land, streets going up. We already got two or three houses going up on each project. So we done put the money into the deal. Because it was all together was like a $38 million deal. Mm, mm, so mm. we we vested. I'm all in. I bought the I bought the land outright cash. That was part of my big investment up front for them. I was in on a half with them. So at that time. I went to that meeting. All I did is told him, hey, man, I don't know where we go from here. I don't know where you finna. At that time, it was like almost 80000 in interest. Every month. God. Just the interest that we was paying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it was, it was factored into the loan, so you didn't see it. But now they call this loan. I'm like, buddy, who? <laughs> where are you finna get this from? <laughs> I thought we were partners. At that time, I forgot. I don't care. <laughs> Be careful with these banks because they don't have your back like you think they do. <laughs> all about the money to them. They'll take that loss. They can take that loss. I can't take that loss. I they can't take that loss. You can't get bailed out. <laughs> so at that time, man, I was losing everything. I was trying to hang on, paying bills, paying for mama house, paying my condo, all the bills I had. Still trying to handle that on the flip side with attorneys. They froze all the accounts that I had with them that I didn't take the money out in time. Yeah. They took the land. Oh, it was going bad. So at that time, that's when I met my wife. 
And I was transitioning through all of that. So when she met mm -hmm. me, I still had the penthouse. I still had the two bins. I still had, had the optics of success. Oh I, had, oh, I had all of it. It was still, <laughs> it was still baller. But at that time, she didn't see it because I'm one. I don't really stress that hard because to me, it's like, man, I only can control what I can control at this point in time. Talk about it. I thought, man, what can you do? Any right. day, me stressing about it, I can't throw my hands up. So any day, I end up letting the, the penthouse go. Uh, Called, I was. They one I four goes on one I just gave back. It was just going crazy, and at that time, that's when I had met my wife. So I'm still trying to now figure out what's next steps. Yeah. At well, that time, I'm in I'm in a situation where I don't know where I'm going up or down. What I want to do now? Were you scared that I wasn't gonna accept? That's it? what I want to know. Well, I felt like it was too early on. We just met. <laughs> How can you meet somebody two three months in? Now you tell them, hey man, you know I'm dealing with a. You know, eighteen million dollar lawsuit. He's uh, <laughs> twenty four years old. She don't understand it. She don't know. You know, you don't know how to take it. it. Feel like we was too new for her to give her my problems at the time. Yeah, she didn't know it, but she kind of saw it happening. She was like, "Well, one minute you're in a condo, next minute you're not. You know where the bins went. Uh, you know, she. Just I never started, questioned it. The she time. never questioned it, but never. she could see it. And once we got together, and she kind of knew what was going I on. I just waited for him to tell me. I knew it, you know, but I mean, I mean you can tell, you know what I'm saying? Because him as yeah. a person, you know, you move a little differently, a little freely when there's move, when there's, you know, freedom to move, there's room to move. Um, when the money but comes. I, yeah, but I, I didn't, I never questioned it. I'd ask little little questions, like little things like, so what's going on? No, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, so I was just trying to make it happen. Well, I was just trying to make it happen at the same time. I, you know, I'm, I'm uncovering every rock, trying to figure out the next plan. How are we going to make this work? How, what's my next step future-wise? Because I've always been a mom. I took care of myself. I took care of my mama. You know, yeah. every step of the way, it's already been planned out for me. I never was in a position to where, like, financial advisors, everybody who I thought was on the team, you found out they had, you know, backdoor deals. And yes. hit the fans. So everybody run when the mess comes. Everybody. <laughs> my family, my uncle Ron, who was a business partner, he was one of my <laughs> Financial advisor run, they arguing, they about to fight because you find out, oh, the reason we got into this deal because you cut a backdoor deal for yeah. some months if you can bring Raw into this. Yeah. So yeah. it was just a whole bunch of mess at the time, man. So it was it was a big fight then trying to figure out what was the plan. So at that well, point, absolutely. I had no, I had nothing else to fall back on. So, but me and my wife were still together. We, you know, we still was functioning. So at that time, that's when uh my guy Mike Well told us to come to this class. At that time, I didn't have no other option. I'm like, but it, let's go. Well, that's that's fast forwarding three years later. All of this happened within the first couple of months. Yeah, right? but it still was through them. <laughs> the first, the first, year. The first, the first year, year and a half. Yeah, the first year and a half was a financial year. struggle. Yeah, because we didn't yeah. move until the first year after. The yeah, the first year. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so. Let me ask you this then, um, which which unpacks what she said a minute ago, and I'm gonna call you Chi Chi since you said call you Chi Chi. So Chi Chi. Did you have in your mind, I want a guy that, you know, you're in the city of Atlanta where, where you know, you're, we're brainwashed by the optics of Phantoms and Rolls Royces and, and big houses and all that. When you moved to Atlanta, did you have in your mind that you want to snag a dude that had money like that? Was that in your oh, mind? No, don't get me wrong. The, the best of the best of the ones are definitely what I attract. <laughs> but... <laughs> 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 That's what was coming, but it, to me, that it just that doesn't mean anything. That lifestyle to me is I'd rather struggle in a shack with somebody that got my back a hundred times over than you really believe that? you know by myself. Um, uh, so to me, I've never been materialistic. I've been a hustler my whole life. I've been on my own for a long time. So for me, the glitz in the glass that don't that don't impress me. I don't care who you are. And that's another it's reason. Never did. And that's another reason that I fell for her because the first time we met, after we met, I took her to Waffle House. We didn't go on no mm. fancy day. We went to Waffle House that night. I love Waffle House. And this woman, and how she got me was this woman cut up my waffle for me <laughs> and opened up my ketchup pack. Like, <laughs> come on there. And come sat on. next to each other beside my plate. And I'm sitting there, you know, I don't even know what to say because I'm like, but I feel like a little kid right now. <laughs> who does this? You know, I don't be all got away. I ain't never seen one cup of waffle up, cut, open my ketchup pack. We doing all this at Waffle House. I'm just moving. <laughs> What girl look like you doing this? Yeah. So I'm like, man, this is she's a widow. Like I could do something with this. She Listen. was okay with that. 
Cause yeah, she no, came I, for I, that. Yeah, I'm from the hood. So to me, money come and go. But I, I never been materialistic. I've never cared about the glitz and the glam. Even today, even we live a pretty good life, I could afford the bags and the red bottles. But I guess what? I don't, don't want them. I don't she care don't for them. them. I still refuse in this day where we are today to buy them. I just... One time, one, one time one. I bought a pair of boots and they were on super sale, these red bottoms. And with I took them back thousand. the next day because I was like, it just don't feel right. Like it's just not who we I am. We bought them, she took, she had them for one day. Uh, give me a pair of Air Max boots. I'm happy. Give me a pair. I'm she was like, this stupid. I can't spend this kind this of money. Is, I just, I feel like I'd rather create memories than spend money on stuff. Where we do spend our money on our household stuff. That's where yeah. we spend a good check at. Well, I like to see my money. But back yeah. anyways, red bottoms are ways. Keeping up with the trends or caring about them cars. I don't care about none of that. I've never yeah. had any, even today. I still don't. You know what? I think you don't spoke a word because we don't hear enough of that. And no. see, with men, they'll look at a woman like you and they go, ah, oh, shoot. I think she's <laughs> out of my league financially. God, dog, let's see what I got to do. So then they'll bait and switch it. They'll lie. They'll go rent, especially in L.A. I know dudes that go rent Lamborghinis and all this type they of stuff. They'll yeah. take a chick out and, and they stand three to an apartment. But they're selling you this pipe dream to get you caught up emotionally and all that. And then when you actually, when it's revealed that they don't have much, then they're crossing their fingers, hoping that you've already, you're far gone now that you're there. Uh, the but for you to part, say what you just said, huh? The crazy part is that's what made it, made me see him pass the fun boy, right? Because he, he now he definitely had a reputation. He's messed up them everything walking in Atlanta, but <laughs> The reason why I stayed with him is because these girls couldn't get his check. He wasn't out here buying bags or paying mm -hmm. rent and paying go. for girls. And to me, I want a husband that, you know, given sleeping with girls is one thing, but given a man's where he, where he spends his money is a whole different uh, I think yeah. level of... Well, it's a value. It's a value or yeah. a validation. I think a lot of men who are extra flashy always want to talk about, I've been with this one, I can buy this, I can spend. I don't like that flashiness. To me, that streams insecurity. And he yeah. wasn't Dude, he was. Mm, I didn't he kept back cool. He's gonna be in the club in a, in a tank top. I mean, a, a flip flop. A, a flip flops and some um, basketball shorts. I love that. <laughs> I don't like a dude that everybody can get get that check from. Like to yeah. me, that's not what we're gonna. Well, do. I just always, I always been a humble Smart. guy. Smart. Even though I played in the league, people used to the always wonder. Me. I if somebody asked me that I played ball, I tell them I didn't. I just be like, I'm a regular guy working nine to five. He told me he was a car salesman. I did. I told him I was a car salesman. <laughs> and I sold cars. I did have a car dealership did at the time. But, though, but I didn't. I wasn't selling no cars, though. <laughs> but I never I never used that, man, because I always feel like, man, I'm just like you. It don't matter what I do for a living. We all, <laughs> I just always be the guy, man. Everybody I hung out with would be my ball ball. Or just a regular guy. Those are the people I kept in my yeah. circle because I never wanted to have them objects. Like, I, like, in order for me to be who I am, I got to show like this is who I am by what I got. No, and that's never like been that. me. Always and that's what I liked about him because it used to be a turn off to me when guys would approach me. And I feel like in Atlanta, it's like the city of tricks. That's what I call them. They, um, that's what they lead with. Oh, you know, I'm so-and-so I play. I'm like, oh, so what, so what you think? That may work for her over there, but this, I may look the part, but I'm far from it. So <laughs> couldn't trick me with that. I didn't care. He said, the "City of tricks." <laughs> and guys lead with money. Oh, I can buy you this. I can take you here. No, I'm like, you know, my wife ain't never been there. She don't even know. I don't. Care. I was so green. I <laughs> Listen, I t I tell this story when I first moved to Atlanta. I went out with this guy who, you know, um, pretty well known or whatever the case may be. Had plenty of money, uh, and this was my first time going to a, a five star restaurant. I think I'm 22, 23 at the time, and um, he's trying to impress me, like. Oh, he orders a bottle. It was Dom Perignon. I never heard of Dom Perignon before. <laughs> so he like order and it was disgusting anyways. And they were like, uh, walking around like, you know, asking for drinks. And I was like, oh, let me, I don't drink. So I was like, let me get a virgin daiquiri with no whipped cream. <laughs> and they were like, what? Like, we don't have that here. And then it was like the hoodest thing. So to me, I never put on. I think a lot of girls that come from nothing, come to Atlanta with these dreams and all of a sudden they bougie and they uppity. I, don't, I, I never understand Listen, that. I don't care about them extra fancy restaurants. I want to eat good. You know, give me the plate with all the food. So, <laughs> yeah. Love it. Love now it. Now you're to see why I, I stuck it out and chose this Yeah. One. This one is it. Else, man. And, and it's a good thing that she's like that, got the humble heart. Simple and but the specific. So how did you respond to when he, or at what stage did he say, hey, babe, this is what I'm going through financially? And how did you respond to it? Well, I think I got to see everything full 
up front uh, when mm. we moved in together. And um, and I was cool. I, I, I know what it's like not to have nothing. You know what I mean? And I would never leave him in a situation, no matter how crazy our relationship was, because I know what it's like to be alone. And I would never leave him while he was down, regardless. And even though I was a firecracker and crazy, I used to laugh all the time. I was like, I may not be what you want, but God sent you what you need. You know, mm. I said, we're going to make it regardless of whatever. I remember you were in the bathroom time laughing about it when we finally kind of started to get through. And I was like, we talked about why he didn't tell me everything up front. You know, he said what he said. I didn't feel like it was a burden that you needed to carry. And I was like, well, how did I do? You know, well, how did I yeah. do here? Like, you know, so mm -hmm. it was it was big. Oh, let me ask him, Chi Chi. How did she do, Rod? <laughs> she did well. <laughs> She did well, but it still it still had times because then they threw us trying to figure it out. You know, it always was the question. So what's the plan? What are we yeah. doing? What are you going to do? What? How are we going to We make both this are hustlers, though. So we always So we going to go make it happen. We was always going to bring something in. I don't care if I work seven nights a week because I was bartending at the time. We're, he was the same way. I, he's a hustler hustle by everybody. mindset, so he's going to go get it. So he's always bringing something in. Don't get me wrong. It may not have been a steady income like from a yeah. job to fail, but we but always had that. stuff going on. Yeah, we was we were one to figure it out. We are we are an amazing team. I'll say that. But once we and then at that point in time, we got into the church. We got saved. We got into the Word. You know, we put our vision board together. We, you know, we add we put it. We call it uh, what is it called? Circle of Truth. So mm -hmm. basically, you put in the circle everything that you want God to bless you for, and anything outside of that that you get surplus, then you put it back into God's kingdom and try to do for others. So we Ooh. put all together, we put our circle and we want this house, we want this, this, this. And once we did that and prayed on it, you know, we left it there. And at that point in time, we just started our journey. And at that point in time, stuff was just coming left and right. You know, we built a home, you know, our daughter came right after we got married. Right she was pregnant a month after we got married. <laughs> So um, I, have six, 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 I, I, I got a job start working in this IT company. Knew nothing about technology nothing. at all. <laughs> I, mean, I had no clue about anything from a router to nothing. I didn't know anything. <laughs> but I'm still, I'm in this, I'm in this. He was playing golf at the time. Was and the golfing. CEO was like, I want you to work for me. And, and he, he, it was his first job after the NFL. Yeah, I didn't even know nothing about you. It was kind I, of I a big deal. He had started to reach <laughs> that phase in his life, I think, where it was like, okay, I got to figure out what's next. Like, I can't just. I'm Ron Gardner. I can't just go work a regular job, but it's like, exactly. you know, it's, yeah, it was hard to try to, it was, I could not fathom dumbing down to something that just to me wasn't up to what I brought to the table. It just didn't, it yeah. just didn't do me. So to me, I ended up, I was golfing at the time and a buddy of mine introduced me to the CEO of this tech company. And I told him I want to do it. And he was like, well, come out to the golf course with me. And I was a hell of a golfer at that. So when he, when we got on the golf course, he saw, how good I was in golf and I only had been playing for about two years. And he was like, man, if you can pick this up in two years and, and be as good as you are, I, I think I could do something with you. So at that point in time, he gave me the job, which was a blessing. I'm in IT, I'm in sales. I knew nothing about technology. So I rolled that out for about <laughs> three, four years, four years? About four years. About mm -hmm. four years, learned all I could in the business, learned how to business operate, but I've always been an entrepreneur mindset. Yeah. I've never had to worker mindset. I just never could be a nine to five guy. I always just had to come up yeah. and put vision together, put something in play, create something that I can actually do and I own it. Right. So at yeah. that point in time, I partnered with a, a, a partner of mine who was a was actually out of the military, but he was got a service disabled. He was disabled. Something wrong with his wrist. But he was in IT too as a he was doing coding and project managing. So I said, let's start a company together while we was both still working, he was working at HP and I was working at this tech company. We started a services able veteran owned small business to where we can sell to the government. He, after that, we it took us about two years to get that started because it's a whole process to get into mm -hmm. that system where the government yep. is with you. After that, a year later, we did 8 million in revenue with the government when the whole bad day, all this stuff hit and we've been off to the races ever since. Yeah. And it's just been a blessing, man. Things just line up perfect. We've just been rolling ever since. Oh, that's good. Just be patient. Be patient. Just be faithful. And faithful. That's yeah. good. And I'll tell you something. Those keys, listen, listen, listen. Those are some keys right there. First of all, we got to unpack this. You were golfing. You had taken an interest in golfing and became extremely good at it uh, over two years. You're mm -hmm. golfing with the CEO of this company 
who says he sees your David. See what happens before David was ever entrusted to be a king. He had the first tend to some sheep. And so he was qualifying himself to be a king while he was yet a shepherd boy. And so now here you are. He looks at you and says, you know what? You're qualified. You're like, qualified for what? I don't know nothing about this. He says, yes, you do. I know that that work ethic that you have, that if we transition that in learning golf, which is a very mental, mental, mental straight mental sport, <laughs> that if I can take you from here and just teach you some of these principles, and it's all about learning. I was talking to a friend the other day about it who's going through some transition from a job standpoint. And I said, everything is, a, is you can learn anything. If someone learns it, that means you can learn it too. Yeah. That's how I look at life. And so now he qualifies you and say, just learn this and you'll be great. And then from sitting there saying that this is great, but I believe that God can do so much more with this opportunity. Then you took the tutelage that you acquired from that position. And now God blessed you with your own situation. Boy, when I tell you, that's just God. Oh, it was, God oh, God. God. It was so funny because at the time when I, I didn't like golf at all. A friend of mine took me to play golf. My brother I, actually took Her brother took me and I walked off the course of <laughs> He's like, come get me. This I was stupid. like, who do this stupid? I'm not, I'm, not, going out I'm, not, here. I'm not chasing out this ball all around this course. It's stupid. So <laughs> I didn't even enjoy it because that time I was I was playing pool. I was one. I love competition. I played every yeah. kind of sport, pool, bowling, everything. I couldn't <laughs> do golf for nothing. I didn't understand it. But then when I started realizing, I'm like, man, everybody, when it comes down to who's on this golf course, business. they they all business-wise, they all play golf. All yep. these CEOs, all these execs at these companies. When I'm on this golf course in the daytime, everybody I see who actually ain't working a nine to five because they don't have to. And they money, yeah, making was, money when they ain't there. They making money while they're not there. So I'm like, yeah. boy, I need to get good at this so I can get these invites to these private courses because they just want to play with me. And they just want people who can play. So mm -hmm. I pay, I learned that sport. I'm talking about I almost got divorced because I was golfing so much. <laughs> That was like wasn't killing me at all. That was horrible. The but I, I bought You know in. what it is? It's because it's like a love and hate with his personality sometimes. He's such yeah. a perfectionist in all that he does. When he wants to be great at something, he's going to be he's going to be the best at it. And I love that about him because that's what he put towards our marriage after that first year where I was like, <laughs> no, I'm cool on this. Oh, you can take everything. I'm just going to take my baby and go. And it was like. I was like, you're not a great husband. That killed the spirit. Oh, I could be the best. Watch. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it, it did turn, it made it, whatever happened, it worked. Yeah. But that first year, uh, that was that first year of marriage, he picked up golf, had just had a baby too. So it was a lot emotionally unpacking. I'm like, oh, you out here in these streets. I'm just chasing a little white ball. He's like, you're just so happy. <laughs> my happiness. I'm like, you yeah. can keep that, <laughs> all of that, I'm out. <laughs> He said, I'm just chasing a little white ball. <laughs> just chasing a little white ball. I ain't in these streets doing nothing there. Not so I didn't understand. It wasn't was golf that was the problem. It was the energy the put into golf because, yeah, it was the priority that he was putting. You know what I mean? And there's a book that we read called Marriage on the Rocks, and it actually talks about legitimate jealousy in relationships and marriages because I'm called to be your first priority. So it's mm. going to hurt this spirit some and it's going to show itself. Um, and in the book, the guy talked about he gave up golf for like three years for his wife. And Rob was like, whoa. Stop I'm not doing this, I don't know Close about it. that one. <laughs> you gave it up give it up completely. <laughs> Why can't you just slow down on it? <laughs> no, now he's not doing it now much. But it, it, was just, it was an adjustment. And it was really just a priority issue. It wasn't a golf issue. It was a priority. Like, put in that same energy towards me that you do to that. Because I want to be that thing that you love so much. Mm. Uh, it was a process for sure. Everything... The, how we got to where we are today was definitely all through trial and error. And then it's crazy because full circle right now, I haven't golfed in almost two years. I got <laughs> in the basement. Yeah, she even got golf clubs. So now it's like business has been taken off. You said she got golf clubs. She got golf clubs. Well, I got some when he got into it so that I could be a part of it with him. But you know what I mean? So I can be a part of things that he likes and, you know, take be intentional. Uh, but he takes it too serious. Yeah, she didn't take it for real, so I had to let it. It takes it too serious. I'm like, I'm not out here to actually learn how to golf. Don't you want to know? He's like, wants you to really take it serious. You can be out here golf, and I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so Chi Chi, 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 what you got? Some rhinestone uh, golf clubs? She had the Nike. Yeah, I got I got pink and um, black and <laughs> yes, they're so cute. Like, they're Nike that, that's when the Nike vapors were still popping with they're Nike. Cute. And I'm fresh now when I go out there. I look the part. I'm, I'm so not gonna be cute. Cute. You might not know what you're doing, but you're going to be cute while you're doing it, huh? I can, swing. I can hit the ball. I'm a little athletic now. 
But that's why I say, man, the process is so real, man. Yeah. The actual testimony to see how we got to where we are is so real. And you see how God has worked in our life when we committed to him. Yeah. When I finally submitted to him, that's when I think everything started coming full circle. What made you submit? And what did submission look like? Submission looked like get out my own way. Me always thinking that at the end of the day, things can be done. I'm always at the forefront. If I, I can make it happen. It's on my mm. turn, my time. And when I found out that's not true, because how has that worked out for you lately? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> how has that worked out? You put yourself in, in the best situations. How did it work out? <laughs> you know, and, and I, that's when I came to terms that in the day, my walk just got to match up. And I'm a firm believer else. that God will break you down to rebuild you up. Yes. Yes. You know, sometimes that why we have this conversation all the time. I'm like, do you think because we didn't sign a prenup or do anything like that? We didn't believe any of that. This was forever. I still had my savings and all that, but I'm like, and no. you still got your retirement. You're yeah, a new I still had all that yeah, stuff, stuff that you could have put in place if you wanted to. But yeah. you know, I used to ask them, like, do you think that it would have been different if you still had everything that you had? If it was the lavish life and we didn't have to go through any hard time, especially financially, because that's one of the leading divorce reasons you know yeah. so i yeah. you know you think it would have been different i said no i don't know i feel like it might have been different because i think of course humility had to show up in you and stuff like that but i think sometimes it takes old experience to fully bring you down because for you it was yeah. all of your works it's it my yeah, career it, so it would have gotten mad in that situation it probably would have been totally different. it would have been different i don't know if you would have respected but if me I the same or saw me but if we would have found our way in our word like we did and I still would have had it, then it wouldn't matter. Cause to me, I feel like it's all it's all on God's time. If God blessed me with a wife that he did, at the end of the day, it's my, it's my responsibility to do right by you. So at the end of the day, finance is the last thing I would worry about being scared to lose if I feel like this No, not scared to hit. lose, but scared to scared think to that if, if I lose everything, <laughs> will she leave me? Yes. Oh, if I lose yeah. everything, will she leave me? If yes. She, if you don't that part. Know, it happens, right? You really, you really don't, don't know. know. You don't know how someone's going to deal with a situation until yes. the situation comes. We can say what we want to do and what we would do, but financially, especially for a man, it changes you. For years, I feel like a punching bag and vice versa because here I am still trying to figure out who I am, no clue, and and, and him's trying to figure out who he is next. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So it was a fight for a long time, but when we got into the counseling, the biggest thing is it helped us to deal with ourselves. The, the, the model was your spouse is not your problem. And it took me three years to believe that. But, <laughs> I was always the problem. Definitely is. I was definitely the problem for everything. It's your problem. I'm like, man, I wasn't even there. Hi, I got some but, but when you when you go through courses like that and they make you deal with your stuff, when you say yes. who you, you work on forgiveness and you work on um, unbagging everything, it, it gets real ugly. People think you go into counseling and then all of a sudden it's bliss. No, sometimes it gets no, uglier. It counsel, gets harder. It counseling, reveals counseling a lot of ugly. stuff. You, we, yes. Half the time we're going to counseling, we're driving two separate cars. We're mad. Yeah, it that, gets like that. But you I was just going into counseling, and telling everything. Everything. She was like, <laughs> yesterday. She said about a hundred cuss words, but now she ain't here in front of y'all acting like she cool. I was telling. I couldn't wait to get this counseling. I couldn't wait to get there because I'm finna tell everything. <laughs> everything. She was a hate me. I used to be ready. <laughs> I couldn't wait. I'd be like, you ain't here preaching and you ain't here listening like you all in, but you go. I was there. all in. I'm not there. <laughs> Hey, I used to tell everything. She'd be like, no, he lied. I'd no, I did. I'd tell him. <laughs> so she ended up acting all saved and sanctified now. She didn't cuss oh, me out every which way. That's not true. She still had a lot of anger that's not in her. I, I did have a lot of anger. One thing about my personality, it's, it's, it's a little strong. It can be aggressive to the average person, I guess. But what they <laughs> no, I think, they, the average person. <laughs> they explain that to Rod. They was like, you got to understand, you don't have a wife that you can just pull along. She got questions. Where are we going? Why are we going? Which way are we going? <laughs> It's, I still do that even in the airport. It drives me crazy. But that's who I am. So you have to know that. And it, the, men, the men's ministry, which is amazing, there really helped break him down because he was like, yo, God is not going to ask Chi-Chi what you did with the husband. He's going to ask you, what did you do with the wife that I gave you? Because she's not broken. She doesn't need mm. to be fixed. You know what I'm saying? But you set the tone because women feed off what they're doing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I was going to let that gloss over, but I'm going to go back to that. 
what did you do with the wife I gave you? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep. I heard this powerful message by Miles Monroe, and he talked about how men were supposed to cultivate our women. And it yeah. said that he will wash her with the water of the word. And it puts a huge responsibility on men, which is so important. And that's one thing that I wish is what I recognize after the fact, after my divorce, is that I was the reason for my divorce. I was the reason for um, the marriage not going the route that I wanted to go, because as a leader, as a leader of my home, I didn't know what leadership looked like. You know, exactly. I just felt like we were married. So we married and we just worked this thing out together. So it. I really didn't understand leadership. I never saw leadership uh, in the home. Uh, even though my mom and dad were married, my dad was out the house most of the time and all mm -hmm. that. So I never understood what leadership looked like. And so as God has been unpacking these marriage vows with me, he's been saying he's been showing me and revealing to me those those deficiencies that I had in leadership. And mm -hmm. you can if you have the right wife, you can take her where you want to go. Even yeah. if she's kicking and screaming, she's still mm -hmm. going. That's you know, me. just like just like yeah. you said, y'all were going to marriage counseling. And even though y'all were going in, in separate cars. Y'all were still going. We were yeah, still we going. Were we were still in the fight. We, we were still were in up. the fight. Well, so yeah. when you looked at it at the very beginning, you said that um, to, uh, you were talking about how y'all made a vow that divorce was an option. When did that actually come about? Because you said the first year, <laughs> you were like, oh, I can still go. I was like, what's the paperwork <laughs> on this? I need to know. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, because this one here, I didn't read the fine print. Because I, because the counselor used to be like, they were like, you have to lean on God. I'm like, if I got to lean on God for everything, what do I need Rob for? Yeah, she's right. Like, I got to be like, emotional. That's what, that what you used to say all everything the time. Everything is for Rob. I mean, no, lean on, it's everything got to go to God. What, what, what are you here for? To drive me crazy, to test my spirit every day? That's how I felt. That's what I used to say. she put me through it. Everything yeah. was my fault. It Well, let's not do that. My you know? wife, if I gotta lean on God, why I need him? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What's his purpose? Uh, but yeah, so we went through another. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Session. But it was rough. It was rough. We, it was really rough. <laughs> the first year. That first year, it was super. It was super rough. <laughs> um, of marriage, the first year. My wife was, just, my wife was just on the emotional roller coaster. One day, she, Listen. I can wake up and turn over. She's looking at me crazy. I'd be like, boy, I. I had I, a lot of resentment, and I didn't believe in did. forgiveness. It took me a process to learn and understand that I literally will hold on to things from the very first thing he said when we met. Yeah, she, she <laughs> said, you know, that girl that came up to you? You lied to me in front of each other's name. I was like, you lied to me from the beginning. Like, you know, didn't even tell me your real name. Listen, I felt, name. because in the beginning, I held on a lot of resentment because I felt like he tricked me into loving him because he was living a whole double life. So that yeah. was a lot to unreveal for me, you know? I wasn't one, I could forgive, it. well, I didn't really know how to forgive. My forgiveness was keep it moving. Like, all right, mm. you're just out my life, you know? Yes. So that was a process. He was the first person that I had to, that I felt Sit like hurt me. I had to stay and work it out with. That was, yeah. that was really new for me and I was, I was, I'm a woman with pride. It took a lot for me, you know, especially I feel true. like I can pull any man I want. What am I doing? This is crazy. <laughs> you know? I did. And I was, but I was crazy about him. So I fought myself a lot, you know? So what but, was it about him then? What was it about Rod? I don't know. What clue. was it about me? <laughs> I want to know. What was it about me? Yeah, I listen. I used to say it all the time. It must be God's plan because I tried to break up with him a thousand times. I just couldn't leave him alone. I don't really know. I, I mean, of course, I was consistent. I know. I was committed. Yeah. Consistently. I was consistent. <laughs> listen. Not in the beginning. I'm talking about after. <laughs> no, <laughs> after. No, listen. Listen. He, of course, he's a hundred percent my look on the outside. He's oh, extremely man. attractive. A hundred percent. He has all of that. But like I say, his character, I, I had to look at him outside of me and outside of his situation. I felt like he was solid. I felt like he was a good dude by himself outside of everything else. He he just he, he had a heart. He was a good dude. Like I really could see that out in the midst of all his issues and stuff that he had going on that I felt like was just clouding him. I could tell that he was hurt. I could tell that he was in, in a dark space, even though he wouldn't reveal that to me, even though he could, I know what hurt looks like. I know what pain looks yeah. like. I know what covering that up with a smile and keeping it moving looks like. That's why even through some of the hardest times in the beginning of our relationship, even beginning living, living together, I wouldn't leave. I might take a break and leave for a couple of days, but I get back in it because even though I knew he wasn't in a place to be vulnerable, I, I already know what that looks like. I could see past that in him because I could see him, you know, mm. the rest of the stuff was just, 
We just had to get through the other stuff. And I felt the same the smoke and mirrors. He could see me. I just was covered up with all this unhealed baggage. I just was covered up. But I feel like in the midst of it, we could truly see each other. We just couldn't pull each other out. And we one, had to start putting the work in. The and I think one thing that own. resonated for me when we was in uh, Radical Love was when my wife would go off on these tantrums, they used to tell me and one of my colleagues used to tell me, that's not your wife, that's the 10 year old girl who yes. was abandoned and parents weren't supporting her at 13 or 10, 11. That's that, that's what you're yes. seeing. You're seeing, you need to make sure when you see that, she's not really coming at you. That's just that 11 year old hurt girl mm -hmm. that is just revealing herself to you yeah. and using you as the, the catalyst to get it out. So once mm -hmm. I start seeing that, then now when she going to them tantrums, calling me names, acting like it's all about me, I would just hug and be like, baby, I love you. You're amazing. Yeah. Uh, he would hold me. I, I would, would hold her. She'd be screaming, fighting, trying I to pull away you. from I me. Want, I don't want it to be over. Let just, me go. I used he would just I used hold to just me. hug her and hold he her. Just, I would be literally crying, and she'd be going crazy. And, screaming. and that and was, he would just hold and I me think a lot me, of that. He's not going to leave me. And I like, I'm not leaving. I'm here. I love you. You're amazing. You're amazing woman. You're not broken. You're not this. I used to just pray that over her all the time when she was going through it. And I think a lot of that just helped us heal, help her heal, just the support we had from each other, which was huge. Because in the, the day, that's when the breakthrough happened. For sure. And that was and a that's what that wasn't and that's what that scripture means. Washing with the water of the word, that's what that looks like. We 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 say these scriptures, we read it, and this sounds like great poetry in the Bible, but mm -hmm. that's what it looks like in play is where you grab your wife and you begin to affirm and, and begin to uncover the past lies that were spoken over her and lies yeah. that she spoke to herself and say, know that you're above and not beneath. You're the head and not the tail. You're a Proverbs 31 woman. You begin to start speaking scripture and life over her and you will give birth to a new woman. And as she does the same thing for you and then uh, she's speaking life and giving birth to a new man. That's what marriage is supposed to be about. But oftentimes we look at it as competition and we look at like we, we, we treat marriage like we're adversaries. Like we're we're literally going to fight each other every day. And it's like, well, why are we here if we why just going to be fighting each other? So that did, yeah. It don't make sense. And you find people doing it all the time. All the time. That ordeal space. Three stages, phases of relationships. That ordeal yeah. phase is real. And a lot of times people never come out of that ordeal phase. You can't get and whenever really. you can look at it like, man, it's always the enemy. One thing about yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know the, what he looked like to the fight. Devil, the devil has a job too. He has a job too. And if you can recognize that, then in the, the day you can stand back to back and always fight together and not apart. So yeah. that's just how we see and we go about life. And the devil doesn't have to do much. He literally plants a small seed of doubt in your mind, a small seed of resentment in your mind, a, a bad memory, just trigger you. He lets you do the rest. You know what I mean? So right. I think we don't give him too much credit. We just have to learn. Like I, I even posted about this recently. Look, when you have a bad, if you're going to be with the person that you feel like hurt you and you choose to forgive them for whatever that issue is, you have to learn to rebuke those bad thoughts as soon as they happen. Because if you let... You're just going to go insane if you just let it linger and you thought after thought it becomes step after step and it just turns into a whole blow. And up. you don't see it too, it's too late. It's too late. Until it's too late. How did y'all transition from, uh, and we kind of skated through your build up, uh, Chi Chi. So you were starting off, you were, you were a bartender when y'all met or as y'all, you know, the early stages of your marriage. Is that correct? Well, we stopped before before we got, before married, got married. When we got married, he was like, "No more bartending." That was a whole nother argument. <laughs> <laughs> and so, what transitioned you into entrepreneurship? Me, well, think about it. Um, you start working at a law firm. So, I, I, at, like at that, at that time, you know, I really had to understand because, like, when I stopped, when he wanted me to stop bartending, I was like, "No, screw that! I'm not about to even give you full financial Control over my financial anything. life." You're right. And I, I just wasn't built like that. And so um, we actually sat down with Mike, the counselor, and he kind of talked to me. He was like, you know, God isn't asking you to trust Rod. He's asking you to trust him. You know what mm. I mean? He's giving you the space right now to say, can you trust that he's going to handle this while you, you know, figure something else out for your life? It's time. And that was a struggle for me. Um, like I said, I've been a single mom and being on my own. I didn't have the support of family. So I was like, Ugh, letting anybody take food off my table just wasn't something I was going to be. Mm -hmm. It was it was a fight. 
Um, but at that time, I started praying and I started fasting. I asked God for clarity, but I went down this road of just getting different jobs, going to school, trying a law firm, just trying different things, just something, you know what I mean? Trying to figure out my purpose. I didn't have that earlier on. You know, a lot of people in their 20s are trying different jobs, trying different things, figuring out who they are. I didn't have that luxury. I was just in survival mode for a long time. So when God put me in the position when we got married for me to take the time to figure that out, I went head in. Um, and then, but after I had finished this fast, God had just kind of revealed fitness. We were in the gym all the time, every day. We had, you know, I cook all, I'm, a, you know, I'm a great cook. So meal prepping is what kind of came up first. And that's what kind of opened that door to um, doing it myself. I stayed working a regular job until my hustle made more than that job. And Very then I kind of just took on um, from there. And what do you do now? I own Total Body 20. I own a couple, couple things. My hands and all types of stuff. <laughs> but yeah, I own Total Body 21, which is a great uh, fitness company, which I definitely target everybody of all shapes, sizes, and ages, but definitely women and mothers who um, are trying to keep it tight after marriage, because I definitely believe that it's important for us, especially in relationships. You know, statistically, they say you fall off. I believe in being fine forever. So yeah. I just try to encourage other women. Um, I wear my race wrap all the time, which is so I own products. I thought that's a dope look, man. I love it. Yeah, so he has all types of good stuff on there. It's a one-stop shop fitness from supplements to just everything you can think of to help you be a healthier you because it's it's mind, body, and soul, and that's what I try to peep. You can look good on the outside, but you got to be solid on the inside too. 100%. And so about four weeks ago, uh, I started back working out. I hadn't worked out. I didn't even realize it's been since December of last year. Um, I got a I, – I have a, a spiritual support system around me all the time. My friends are very – uh, strong believers. And one of my homegirls, shout out to Christian Russ, she she called me one day, said, Holy Spirit told me that you need to start working out. You need to, you need to, you need to start working out. And I was like, the Holy Spirit got to telling you about what I need to do. You know what I'm saying? I was offended. I was like, I need to work out. What you trying to say? And what was, and what was so crazy is God was already telling me that a couple of months prior. And I was like, ah, whatever. He said, all right, Latarius, you're 43, you're getting older. You need to start watching your health and all that. And I was like, uh, whatever. So then when she called and said that it was confirmation, I was like, well, why would he tell you? You know, all right, whatever. So about two weeks later, I actually, uh, what made me actually go back to the gym is that I recognized, I realized that Orange Theory was still taking out that $150 a month out of my, <laughs> out of my account. And I was like, hold on, I've been paying this all this time and I ain't been. I said, oh, no. So then I go and I've been working out for the last um three weeks is the fourth week. But I said that um, I made a post on one of my stories and I said, operation uh, total package uh, loading. And as I discovered, uncover and recover love, I want my, my wife to inherit the total, the total package. I'm doing the work emotionally, spiritually, uh, um, relationally from a familial standpoint, you mm -hmm. know, strengthening my family unit. But Physically, I can't be showing up with a beer belly and saying, you may have to take care of me for the next couple of years because I ain't yeah. been taking care of my own body, yeah. you know. And so um, I'm coming for you, Rod. That six pack that you, eight, eight, eight pack you got. We got a 10 pack. We got a 10 pack. Yeah, I sat there and I looked at that picture that y'all posted the other day. I said, oh, that's what we doing? That, that's, 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 that's what we doing, Rod? Okay, okay. Yeah, and then, and then the love we got in the fitness, man, and we've been full throttle. I know I've been into it my whole life. But yeah, he kind of kind of opened that door for me, and it's crazy because it's been there the whole time. And one thing good about it, time. I think the fitness journey for her, she's great at being a motivator, telling her testimony, inspiring women, speaking on her faith and journey walk. And the fitness helped her because all of her captions be this long and it about be everything about else. everything else <laughs> other than fitness but women gravitate to her like no other like she yeah. got followers who are like like they committed to what chi chi stands on and they want that so they they follow her so i think that was her the fitness is great but her her actual being able life. to yeah. speak life into people and her being a great speaker is awesome and that's what gets her going and that's what made me actually say I would love to have y'all on the platform because of y'all's Christian foundation, the way that y'all operate as a family unit. Y'all have an amazing family. They're absolutely beautiful. Uh, it doesn't look like it's, all right, we just got in an argument. Let's take this picture. 
All right, y'all go back to what y'all need to do. Well, right. Most of you are mad at you. <laughs> it don't look like that. It don't look like that. It look like it's true. It looks like it's solid. It, you know, yeah. I'm a director by profession, so I can see the inner monologue. I can see behind the face. And yeah. so um, when I looked at y'all, I was like, oh, that's just the real deal right here. I like them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I like that she scratched your, 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 your truck up the other day. You know, I like <laughs> <that>. <laughs> The oh, problem man. is I can't see over the, the top of the hood. <laughs> you couldn't see over the top of the hood. And she you going to bring out. that up right and now, huh? Just, yeah, I had to bring it up because you think a sharp is going to fix it. You think I'm a sharp is going to be touch up like, paint. What is that? I opened the door, I'm man. I'm going to get that black is, marker out there. She not turned the little uh, grocery cart reel all the way to the side. I'm like, baby, how you didn't see this Drink my protein shake again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that too about the protein shake. But that's so what it is. He drank all of my protein shakes. That's why I had his for the record. <laughs> for the record. For well, the record, let's be clear, huh? Let's be clear, huh? He he stole from you first. Yeah. There it is. So that's what that, and that's what I'm talking about. Marriage should be fun. When you marry your best friend, it should be fun. And like y'all said earlier, is that the chemistry that you have that if y'all are able to keep the foundation of what y'all's relationship was built on, which is extreme chemistry and love towards one another, that y'all can weather any storm. Whether you go to a, through a financial crisis, your love will help y'all level up and build up to something greater because as she's encouraging you, you're encouraging her, and y'all build something magnificent together. And, yeah. and not to be jealous of each other's success, uh, to encourage the other person. And that's one thing that I see too with him is that I watch him affirm you and encourage you and let you, baby, do what you do. You know, have your total fit. You, you, you doing it, girl. Keep doing what you're doing and be proud of your come up instead of what you, what the pain told you originally, or you want me to quit so that you can control me, you know? And mm -hmm. that's the first thing that women think. They go, hold on. If I'm totally reliant on you financially, you going to control me. Oh, yeah. no, no, no. We're not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't stupid. Now I'm from the streets. I'm supportive than that. <laughs> and then God says, I want you to be from the kingdom, though. I want you to be from the kingdom and represent that. And then God creates something even beautiful. You yeah, because it so, took me a while to uh, to take the offense off or separate the offense or separate the attack and, and, and see that he saw me bigger than I saw myself at yes. the time. And he was trying, and you know, and that's another thing people think in relationships, like it's supposed to be peachy cream, like you're supposed to talk to me all soft all the time. But sometimes, and you know, when God is changing, he was going to challenge you and it's going to get real uncomfortable sometimes. And he uses your spouse to really reveal that. And if you can't separate the offense or the attack, I think that's where you go downhill. But if you can see past it and thank God for our community, um, it helped me, you know, go into perspective of what Rod was saying without even though he was using different words, you know? So it was huge. <laughs> yeah. That, that is huge. That is good. Was, Answer fighting. this for me. Answer this for me before I let y'all go. Mm -hmm. You know, people could hear what you said earlier where, you know, the dysfunction in your relationship. You ask God that, hey, if we're not supposed to be together, then make me just totally, you know, basically turn my heart off and let give me the power to re release him. You have women that are holding on to toxic relationships that, is they're doing. God has no business uh, or has God's not responsible for their relationship. God been wanting them to let go of that years ago, but they keep holding on to it. Right. Do you know the answer in how do you know the difference from what appears to be toxic and God is wanting to get the glory out of it because that's your purpose partner versus you're holding on to toxicity far too long? For me, it was God. Like I honestly, even though it was like it, it's hard to explain if you're not, I, even though I wasn't fully connected, I wasn't fully walking that walk, but I, it was just something about Rod that God was just, I couldn't, trying to leave him was the hardest thing I've ever gone through. And I have been through some things and it was just whatever it was, it was like, God was like, no, you're going to stay. Every time I wanted to leave, it was like, no, you're not. And it was like, no, I should be leaving for sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I just couldn't. So I, but again, like I said, I, I had to go down to the core, like, you know what I mean, of who he was outside of everything. And I think because of all the things I've gone through, I feel like God, you know, equipped me with everything I need to be able to handle that, sustain it and to deal with it, you know, for him and me and for what he, whatever the plan was. I always felt like he had a plan for us, but I, I literally could feel a wall like just stuck. We couldn't get over there. 
And that wall didn't break down until we truly started yeah. walking everything out. And for me, I honestly feel like in toxic relationships, the reason they stay toxic, because you stay in the same place. You don't change anything. You don't lean on God. You don't lean on anything. You just stay toxic. You just think who you are is what, who you're going to be. And, me it's, as yeah. I and, it's, and, it's, and And either you're going to change or we're not going to make it. And in the day, I think in order for you as a woman or a man to see that, meaning you have to see change in you, yourself as well as her. If she's not willing to change and take the necessary steps to make this toxic relationship become uh, healthy. A, a healthy relationship, then in the day, what are we doing? Is one how are you gonna stay? Both. It's never it's never gonna change if there's no change being had. No there change, it is. you yeah. know. So I there think is. that's what people do. You stay in a toxic relationship doing the same thing. People, someone asked me this yesterday, actually, on my comment, and they asked me, well, how did you know to stay through the toxicness and pray through? I didn't stay and pray through a toxic relationship. We both made a conscious effort to change. We there both, it is. Both that's both what I want you to talk through. about right there. Yeah, yeah we that's both the put that's in the both, people we both see. set we, boundaries. We, we both. both put things in place to say, okay, we're not going to do that. We tried that, and that triggered something we should we won't go yeah. back to. Okay, we're not going to do that. We went to the drawing board. So when he says we, we created a vision, we cre we wrote it down. We literally have a poster board mm -hmm. in our room that breaks down each other's triggers, that breaks down you know, what those triggers yeah. turn us into or what how they make us feel and why they make us feel that way. So we know to stay away from it. We set boundaries and then the rest was respecting them yeah. and honoring each other because honoring each other is honoring God. And, and sometimes that's what you got, and sometimes you got to be uncomfortable. Like with my wife, I know transparency is huge for her because of her insecurities and hard for her to trust. So for yes. me, as a man, it's like okay, it's no passwords. Okay, it's it's uh, the GPS stuff on the phone. We have access to each other. Yes, yeah. we have access to all my 100%. social media platforms. Yeah. You know, to create that if you really want something to work. People don't want to get that up. Oneness. People don't want to give up the stuff that you have to do to in order to make something work. Like it's not nothing that you're doing that, oh, I just don't want her to be on my phone or she should be not insecure. But if she is insecure, but how do you change and how do you make that situation not be that no more? For her, how, her how, do, how do you make her at peace where she don't have to feel that way? Because in the day, once she gets over that hump, now what you thought was something that you was uh sacrificing to you is nothing because in the day guess what now you got a loving wife now you got a wife who smiles at you every day now you got a mm -hmm. wife you can sleep next to and wake up in the morning and she give you a hug and a kiss and sugar <laughs> now you got all of that peace that you wouldn't have had if you wouldn't have sacrificed on to that. what you did so i felt like for both of us we sacrificed so much of ourselves, ourselves mm -hmm. for our relationship and now we got something that now everything we do is just they be like, how do y'all do? I be like, man, we don't even think about it. Like, this we is just, just work. This, this is how we is are. Normal. This is normal. We're always together. We do everything and together. People, just, we're and insane. when people see that, when you saw sacrificing for your spouse, each other, not one way, both ways. Both ways. Then all of a sudden you start seeing the kingdom work for real. And now you can be in this loving relationship. And it just, it seemed like you just, you know, you just it enjoying just, it. just going with the flow. You're just enjoying it. It's easy. <laughs> Listen, man, what you just said is extremely powerful and I pray that people truly get what you just said. Because I saw a meme or I saw something where someone was like, if I gotta give my, uh, I ain't finna give my man access to my phone, I ain't finna do that, I forgive him, I'd rather just get a new dude. If a man needs this, I don't want it. And vice versa, if a woman needs this, I don't want her. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, we're not talking about a girlfriend. We're not talking about just some some girl that you dating. We're talking about yeah. your wife. That's what I'd be trying to make sure everybody okay, we're not talking this about girlfriend is, and boyfriend. This is real wife. Thing. But then they say, but as a wife, I just still, she, if she insecure, she need to get over that insecurity. She need to go to therapy and counseling. And you hit the nail on the head. You said, but this is who you married for better or for worse, for richer, or for poor, through sickness and in health, through insecurities and, 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 and knowing you. Hey, whatever it is. Whatever it is. So the reality is simply saying that there is nothing that I will not withhold from you. So if if you struggle in this area, I got you, boo. I we we because if if she struggles in that area, then struggle. we struggle we, in that area. Yeah, it's if, we. I, if I struggle in this area, we struggle in this area. Why? Because the Bible says that the two shall become one. So mm -hmm. we we're we're working together. So 
and, and you learn this in sport, if there's a weak side, then it's a weak, the team is weak. If, is if something weak. is weak, we're weak. We lost the game. I, it can't be because I fumbled, we lost. No matter how you look at it, we lost yeah. as a team. And, and that's so what the reality is. The reality is we, we treat marriage so individual. We have this individualized mentality. And when I say I want this, what you just said, to resonate with the hearts and the minds of the people that just heard you say this as a man, not some weak man, but a manly man, a masculine man has not been controlled by some woman, but you decided to relinquish, to lay down your sword and say, here, listen. Baby, we we in this together. Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. And I speak right now that the people who are watching this podcast, that what this these kingdom, this kingdom-minded couple has has said during this podcast resonates with the hearts and the minds of the people that will receive it. Mm-hmm. Satan, I bind up the spirit of divorce. I bind up the spirit of deception where you convince people to hear things in their spouse that they didn't even say just to cause up strife and cause animosity and cause division. We come against that spirit right now in the name of Jesus and we cancel that assignment right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you declared in your word that no weapon formed against them shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against them shall be condemned for this is their inheritance because we are servants of you. So Lord, we claim that authority. We claim that dominion. And so right now, the name of Jesus, if it's a couple that's going through division in their marriage right now, Uh, I ask right now for a peace, a fresh wind to overtake their household right now in the name of Jesus, where they begin to say, I don't know what's going on, but we feel the presence of the Lord in this place. God, we thank you in advance for the testimonies that's going to come forth. Thank you for the the, the gardeners for for speaking their truth and transparency and let it be healing to the people that are watching, the people that are single. Let them understand the journey that they have to continue on in order to become whole before you connect them with their purpose partner. Lord, in all these things we ask in your name, we give you all the praise, the glory, and the adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Man, y'all, y'all. Man, y'all started something. Y'all done, y'all hey, done, y'all done we made it. We going, man. We got to save, man. These marriages are so important, man. Leaving these legacies, building these families is so important, man. It's Keeping so them together. You know, the social man, media. Let me I would not let social media be the one that drive my kids and and, and set their paths. They're going to watch what's happening in this household and they're going to know what's true and you what's lead not. lead by example. For real. Listen, I'm going to drop y'all social media handles. Anything else you want to leave with the people? Um, like, I could talk to y'all all day. Y'all some dope individuals. <laughs> I appreciate it. Dope, 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 dope. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank but for you. sure. Anything y'all want to leave? Check out huh? my wife's Total Body 21 account. TotalBody21.com. You go in there and get everything you want. One On my up. end, if you want to get into fitness, fellas, it's gstrongfit.com. You can buy supplements. You can get your workout We program. got a new fat burner coming out. That's going to be super amazing. And so they, be on the oh, lookout really? for that. Yes. This holiday eating going to catch y'all. You're going to need this fat we burner. We got a whole supplement line coming out, so be on the lookout for that. <laughs> fellas, if y'all are in the trucking business and y'all are drivers who are some committed drivers who love that role, go to zrtfreight.com. And zrtfreight.com. Z, and like in zebra. Like in zebra. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you have a trucking you have a trucking company too? I do. So with my medical supply company, we was doing so much shipping all across America that I kept seeing how much I was charging my customers for shipping. these uh for shipping and these got their big hey, rigs going across the road. I'm like, buddy, I need to be in this. See? That's so why you're that, the man. So this year yeah. I started this freight business and man, we got trucks on the road from box trucks to hot shop, we got semi trying to go, we full throttle. So I'm just right, right. right. I need to borrow five dollars. Let me borrow hey, five dollars. I got it for you if you need it, man. I got you. I got yeah, you. No, you over here making all the money. Put you on the road real quick. <laughs> no, you don't want that problem. <laughs> <game. I got laughs> Listen, but you, you see what I'm saying? though? that's what's so dope. When God, y- y'all would have never been able to imagine this for you. For, you know, for y'all no, to marry. Being in that club. No. Yeah. We wouldn't have ever saw it. Said you can't find love in the club. We never saw it. Y'all, y'all, y'all met in the club in the strip club. And then now you said, oh, you said something that was key before we started this live. And I said, let's not forget this. You remember what that was about how y'all have to protect y'all marriage is changing your circle. Oh, yeah. So Uh, we met there. But that was one of the first places that God took away when we got saved. You know, Um, change, of course, is important. Like he says, with everything, if you're going to commit to, you can't be doing the same stuff. So we changed ours. We changed from the people we hung out to the places that we went to. Um, you know, we just started protecting I, and guarding our kids. Man, how do you say it? If you walking with God, 
it got to look different. You should you be able to see look the difference. Different. It should, you should be able to it see the difference. It should look like the world. It shouldn't look the same as everybody else who's not walking. So to me, that's the true test of show if you're really walking with God. Don't talk me to the devil by telling me that you are. Let Don't me, Bible thump me. Let me see the yeah. world. I can't give you every scripture, but I can show you. Yeah, let me see the world. <laughs> let me see what you're actually doing. So we actually made sure that that was key. What you saw looked exactly like what we preach. Yeah. One thing that I love is how God can use people in their unique personality mm -hmm. to be change agents in the kingdom. And so God needed some more thugs. That's how he got Chi Chi. He well, how, well, you know what? You know That's what's what crazy is, and I'm gonna leave it because I know we can't stay out much longer, but I used to be insecure about like when I first got with Rod, that was one of my insecurities. He's he's always dated these little yes girls, they were super soft, but <laughs> outside of that. But they were they were educated. They came from good families. They were smart. And he seemed like he had a good lineup. But to me, here I am, this young 23, 24 year old single mom, Debbie, baby daddy. I'm just out here surviving, figuring it yeah. out. Make me feel small. It, it, like going into certain rooms. I'm like, dang, I didn't even go to college. I don't, you know, I don't know. But when I got saved, and you know, so I just think maybe I have to talk a certain type of way or be a certain type of way. But when I got saved and I started to see myself the way God saw me, I was like, yo, he didn't make a mistake with me. He's using me exactly the little wretched way I am <laughs> to actually be out here saving lives and be an example and not using every Bible in the scripture, but using testimony, you know, not using mm. you know, every, oh, this platform and acting all holy and now, but keeping it 100, you know, yes. like, and, and don't have to use big words to do it. <laughs> there it is. You know what I mean? Just raw and uncut. So. Not, I love it. Tell me nothing. When I love it, because that's what the Bible says, we're walking epistles. And so, you know, they're getting a chance to read the book of Chi Chi. They're getting a chance to read the book of Rod. Like we're walking epistles. And so uh, when we look at our lives as truly as God sees it, then when they're opening up the book of the terrace, that's what they're reading. This is my journey. This is my personal journey. This is how I receive healing. This is how I receive revelation from God. Mm -hmm. And and hopefully everything I do lines up with God's will. And Amen. the areas that it don't line up, I'm transparent enough to say, hey, that was all me right here. This had nothing to do with God. This was yeah. me. You know? I say, it bothered me about it. Listen, if you had to sin to get it, it wasn't a blessing from God. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was the consequences of your sin, but I'm not saying he can turn good from bad, yeah. but that, Man, that's real. Him when you were doing that, <laughs> hey, hey, man, I appreciate you inviting yeah. me. I'm glad you hit me in the deal, man. It was a pleasure. I'm glad yeah. I was able to connect, man. Anything further you need us for, definitely hit us up. Yeah, we here. Yeah. We love what you're doing, and we got you got the support from us. Well, thank y'all. Y'all give it up for the garden. My God, appreciate that, baby. <laughs> Discover. Uncover, recover love with the new Dear Future collection. The journey starts from within. Let your inner thoughts find freedom on the pages of this richly hued Dear Future Blue Sapphire Edition Genuine Leather Journal. It features a cross-stitched spine and luxurious cording to bind your deepest insights. A great accompaniment is the Dear Future Luxury Bamboo Fountain Pen. There's nothing more intentional than the writing process of a fountain pen. This is an elegant writing work of art. Join the thriving community of fountain pen enthusiasts and purchase one today. These exclusive items and more are available at dearfuturewifey.com. See, we skipped a week last week because I want to make sure that God continues to bring dynamic people to be on this podcast. I'm not, this is not a, a sprint. This is a marathon and this is my journey. So I thank God so much for bringing the gardeners on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Hopefully y'all found as much value as I did. Make sure that y'all visit DearFutureWifey.com to check out the merchandise. But here's my favorite part where I manifest my future wifey. Dear future wifey, we go to the bank to make a withdrawal. No funds available. We're broke. Instant panic overtakes us. However, this isn't a financial institution in which we're attempting to make a withdrawal. This is our love account. There should always be deposits made into our love account to prevent our marriage from going broke. 
Call me crazy, but I don't have a fear of our richer or for poor being financial. I believe our romance will always produce finances. Our love for one another will spark new streams of income and strengthen the endeavors we already have. Finances is the second leading cause for divorce. I believe it's not so much about finances as it is about trust. Whether a couple is rich or poor, the foundation will crumble if it's not built on trust. I will trust you. Our trust will be exemplified by keeping our love account full and knowing we are FDIC insured, forever dedicated in Christ. Your future hubby. Thank you for listening to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.